Hi, I'm Bob German, and this video is Making a Q&A Bot for Microsoft Teams, Part 1. This video will show you how to build a bot that answers questions using the Q&A Maker service in Azure. Q&A Maker uses search and cognitive services to find answers in a knowledge base in response to natural language questions. In the video, I'll show you how to create a Q&A Maker knowledge base and how to make a bot that calls it. So let's dive in. Now the way a Q&A Maker bot works is it begins with the Q&A Maker service, which you see in the lower right. This maintains a knowledge base of questions and answers which can be imported from web pages and documents or entered manually or entered and updated using an API. Then a bot will call the Q&A Maker service, ask it questions, and get back the answers and deliver them to users. In the case of Microsoft Teams, the bot has to go through the Azure Bot Framework Channel Service to deliver its messages. The Bot Framework Channel Service is a harmonization layer that allows your bot to work with all these different services. Most of them can be turned on with just a checkbox. So let's begin. I'm starting here at an FAQ page for Office 365. And there's nothing too extraordinary about it, really. It's just an FAQ. And um, I find that this works really well, regardless of the structure of the FAQ, as long as it's uh, organized around questions and answers. Now, let's go to Q&A Maker. Dot AI. And in order to start, you'll have to sign up for an account, and then you'll have to create a Q&A service in Microsoft Azure. I'm not going to show you that, but the uh, instructions are pretty clear. You will need an Azure uh, account, an Azure subscription, in order to do this. So in this case, I already have my Q&A service. So I'm going to go ahead and connect that, my knowledge base, uh, to that service. So I'll select the um, Azure AD directory, the subscription, and the service. And now I get to give my service a name. Now I'm going to populate the knowledge base from that URL. So I'll just go grab the URL and paste it in. You'll notice a checkbox there for multi-turn extraction from URLs. Uh, multi-turn refers to the ability to um, sort of ask a follow-up question and offer additional help after providing a Q&A maker answer. So this feature would automatically try to um, extract that from the data that you're importing. Notice that you can import from a URL and you could have multiple URLs here and you can import Word, Excel, or PDF files as long as they're organized in some sort of question and answer format. And you can re-import them later and update them so that um, you don't have to redo the entire knowledge base when they change. Notice below that is a category called Chit Chat. What this does is drop about 400 additional questions and answers that are kind of chatty, like, hi, how are you today? What are you doing? And um, you can have a different attitude. So this demos well. I'm not sure how useful it is in real life, but it's fun to try. Now let's go ahead and create the knowledge base. We'll throw the professional one in. Uh, that's safe. We'll create the knowledge base. And you'll see here are it's correctly parsed all of those questions and answers out of the FAQ. If you look closely at the answers, you may notice that they're in markdown mode. So markdown is a syntax uh, that's easier than HTML to type. So if you want to know how to add links and bullets and things like that to your uh, answers, the answer is look up markdown mode on the web and you'll figure it out there. So you can see all the answers are there. And I have the option to add alternative phrasings. Um, that's definitely a big part of curating one of these knowledge bases. It's not trivial. Um, you definitely want to allow time to gather all the information, get a good information architect or business analyst involved, um, interview people um, or have people test it and um, make sure that they're getting the answers that they need before you release it to a broader audience. 
So now if I go forward, you can see those um, chat messages. Are you ever hungry? Well, there's all these different phrases and an answer from the bot. So I'll go ahead and train this. And in real life, it takes longer than that. Uh, and now we can test it. So I like to test at every little step of the way. So um, what is Office 365 is one of the questions. And bang, there's the answer. And you can see that the, the formatting uh, and the hyperlinks survived the round trip from uh, HTML to Markdown and back to HTML. So now I'll go ahead and publish this. And again, this could take a little bit longer. Um, I shortened it a bit in the video. And what you'll see here is the information for calling this Q&A service. So this is just a web service. You pass in a question, you get back an answer. You don't have to call it from a bot. You could call it from Power Apps. You could call it from um, some other application that needs to translate questions into answers. It's just a simple REST service. So, uh, and it's secured, by the way, with an authorization endpoint key. And you want to make sure to secure that. Don't, uh, anybody who had access to that would be able to get at your FAQ. And they might get information about your organization that you don't want to give them. So now, let's go ahead and create the bot. And it brings us right into Microsoft Azure, where you can see um, that I'm creating a thing called a web app bot. Now, a web app bot, uh, first of all, the name needs to be unique across all of Azure. Um, a web app bot is a combination of an Azure app service and an Azure bot registration. So this is going to both host the bot and give me the access um, to the bot channel service. This is... Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the free pricing here. Note that the pricing is actually just for the bot channel service here. Free pricing gives me 10,000 messages a month. Um, that's separate from the app services that are going to be used to run Q&A Maker and the bot. So I'll take my um, app name. I can decide what language I want to generate. And it'll generate the, the, the um, bot in the language I choose. And that will allow me to go back later and edit the code if I want to. So I'll skip application insights for this demo, although it is a good idea in, in real life, and I'll create the bot. Okay, so let's go to the deployment. All right, so the deployment was successful, and now here we are inside of our um, Office 365 answer bot. And the first thing I'm going to do is test this in web chat. So again, I can type in a question and get back an answer. So let's turn on that Teams channel. Remember how the bot channels talk to all the different applications? Well, we need to enable Teams here. There's not much to it. Just a checkbox for the terms of use, and you're off to the races. So now I'm just going to go grab this app ID out of the settings. This is the Azure AD application that was registered along with the bot. Um, if you're into the details, the bot actually uh, is authenticated using uh, client credential flow um, and a client secret using that app ID. If you paste it into the chat window in Teams, it just works. And I can come in here and um, type another question. And it works perfectly. In the next video, I'll show you how to package this up and make it into a Teams application. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash SPPNP videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German. And please check out my blog at bob1german.com. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.